For decades, we've been told to limit our sodium intake. It's been government regulations, American Heart Association regulations, and it's basically been unquestioned until recently. So this is what's interesting. The initial recommendation to limit our sodium intake goes all the way back to this study called the DASH study, which was in 1997. And it only involved 400 people. And of those people, those who had the low sodium diet, people without high blood pressure to begin with, lowered their blood pressure by three over two. So three for the systolic, two for the diastolic. Not very drastic numbers. Those who already had high blood pressure lowered it by 11 over five. A little more impressive. There was no difference in heart attacks or strokes or death. Based on this study, the American Heart Association made their guidelines to limit sodium intake to less than 2,300 milligrams per day. Now, however, in the past 30 years since that trial, we've had hordes of data coming out that looks at sodium intake, and still there's been no conclusive evidence showing reduction in strokes, heart attacks, or death by lowering salt intake. In fact, we have some studies suggesting exactly the opposite. The Framingham Offspring study, for instance, showed higher blood pressures with lower sodium intake. Some meta-analysis show increased risks of heart attacks and death at lower sodium intake. Now, none of this is absolutely conclusive evidence, but it clearly shows that reducing salt intake in the general population is not based in good evidence, not based in good science. Now, a lot of you are probably thinking, well, I know when I eat sodium, when I eat salt, I swell up. And many doctors are probably thinking, I've got thousands of patients who I know if, they, if they're off their sodium intake, they end up in the hospital. And that can be true. The other thing studies show is there's about 25% of the population that's sodium sensitive, meaning if you do eat too much salt, you're gonna swell up, your blood pressure is gonna go up. If you have congestive heart failure, that's gonna be worse. But that's 25% of the population. For the remaining 75% of the population, we actually don't need to restrict our sodium intake. But here's the other important thing. Like all our other food components we talk about, where it comes from is crucial. Are you getting your sodium from highly processed junk food? Are you getting it from simple carbohydrates full of salt? Or are you using Celtic sea salt on your freshly steamed vegetables? Are you cooking with Himalayan salt? Where the sodium comes from matters. So the overall conclusion for sodium, if you're not one of the 25% who's salt sensitive, then feel free to use your real salt, your Celtic sea salt, your Himalayan salt. Cook with it, use it on your fresh vegetable, use it on your real whole foods, and then you don't have to worry about it anymore. It's a great way to add taste and enjoyment back into your meals. <music>